Okay. So, welcome to the fourth dialogue of our Erasmus Plus uh, program uh, about environmental and digital citizenship. Today, we have with us Mr. Jaime Doreste and Ms. Irene Ribiera, uh, who are environmental lawyers and activists. Thank you both for being here with us today. Thank you. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, tell us about yourselves. Cool. Start or? Okay, so hi, hello, nice to meet you all. Um, good afternoon. Um, well, my name is Irena Rivera, as Alkino has already introduced. Um, I'm almost a lawyer. I just finished law school and I, I'm on the way to making all the paperwork to be finally a lawyer here in Spain. And Jaime is a much, much more experienced lawyer than I am. He's um, a very wise person and probably one of the best environmental lawyers here in Spain. And he's also um, my mentor on environmental law. And he's a very wise person who will tell you a lot of interesting things today. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. Irene. So as Irene said, I'm an environmental lawyer, much older than, than, than her, of course. And uh, I'm very glad to, to be here with you, to try to share with you the, my personal experience, um, my personal point of view about uh, regarding this, uh, how make the activists uh, a way of life, of professional life and personal uh, life for, for all of us. Okay, thank you. So if you want to start telling us all the things that you have prepared. Hmm. So you first. Sorry, I couldn't find <laughs> any button. Um, well, just to tell you first what we are going to be talking about today, um, I wanted to let you know that basically what we're talking about here um, as they as your mentors have introduced already we are both lawyers and activists uh and we're gonna talk first of all about how do we um put in the same perspective being an activist and how did it eventually end up becoming our way of life and our work and uh, mm -hmm. why do we um you know charge for what <laughs> we did as activists um we will talk about how Jaime's experience relate to my lack of it. Um, we will tell you about some interesting cases we've been dealing with here in Spain. Um, we will talk about, oh, going off from these cases, we will talk about um, the concept of strategic litigation, which is something very interesting, especially uh, how it relates to climate. Um, it's a trend right now in the cl in environmental lawyer world, okay? and. Um, then we will be taking questions. So we welcome your questions. Um, do you want to start take, uh, with your experience, Jaime? Uh, yes. So, uh, well, first of all, um, we are very interested, uh, interested to share with you um, our personal experience, just to show you, all of you, how it's possible to, uh, as I uh, first said, uh, to make your personal uh, activities, your personal feelings uh, regarding social interest, uh, like environmental interest, uh, or um, your uh, special sensitivity with uh, discrimination, uh, defending uh, human rights, and so on. It's not only, so it could be not only your hobby, but it's gonna be, uh, it's possible to make it your way of life, your, your finally the scope and your professional objective. Why, why should I uh, point that? Uh, that? Because uh, it's quite known or, or thought about that uh, once you get a job, you have to forget about your all, all your um, uh, uh, how to say that, uh, all your ideals and, and it's absolutely not true 
once you get a job, you, you have to uh, be proud of whatever you do. Especially in this case, you can choose what to, to do with your life, with your uh, professional life. No? And uh, I encourage you to uh, find the way your a job represents yourself and whatever you feel and whatever you want uh, to do. And try not to uh, make a clear distinction between what do you do when you are working and what do you do when you are not. Because so you can translate all your feelings, all your uh, uh, belongings to, to that, uh, to your professional uh, way of life. So, I uh, several years ago I decided to uh, that uh, my all my professional career uh, will uh, will be in the side of the uh, protection of the environmental. Uh, the, first of all, the nature, but uh, finally you get to the defending. To the defense of the human rights regarding the environmental uh, quality. That is uh, one of the most important uh, pillars of a, a good life. That's to defend uh, the dignity or the integrity of the human life uh, is absolutely essential to guarantee, to encourage, to uh, enforce the uh, environmental law to get uh, a healthy. Uh, environmental for the human beings, not only to the uh, nature or the the life of animals, plants, and so on, because as I said, it's important to to guarantee the uh, air quality, for instance, water quality, and uh, reach biodiversity. And that's that was the way I get uh, into the uh, environmental law because I was a, uh, I, I have been always been a, a lover of nature lover. I I, I don't know if I know a, a lot about uh, law, but I I know a lot of things about birds, plants, and dinosaurs and things like that. And uh, for me, it was the the natural uh, path to arrive to this point. I was, uh, even during the university, I was uh, very conscious uh, about the uh, environmental, all the environmental project problems, and uh, it won I, I always wanted to uh, to make the possible to uh, to make this world healthier and um, environmentally uh, equilibrated. So uh, that was the, my, my personal approach. I started first uh, to collaborate to, uh, as volunteer with a several environmental organizations. And finally, once I uh, get the, the bar, as uh, Irene has just uh, become, uh, I decided to, to try to uh, specialize in environmental law and try to uh, leave for my uh, expertise on environmental law. And uh, 22 years after, uh, I, um, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not uh, absolutely crazy about that. So uh, I, 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 I could prove yourself that uh, uh, it's possible to, to work and to be what do you always want to, to do. But the important thing uh, to, to to take into account is that uh, we have all the life in front of us, so we we have always time to get wrong and to try another things and uh, find your uh, your own way. So don't be hurry, don't get anxious uh, if you don't uh, find a good job, don't find the one the, the first job you want to have because you, you will always. Uh, have time to, to make that. So just focus in the future, not in the short uh, view to, to find yourself a, a way. And if you work hard or, or, or at least a conscious, you will get uh, all the possibilities to, to make uh, your own career in the, the things or in the specialty you, you, uh, you, you like most. So, as Jaime, we thank you for the positive message you are sending. Yes, so I mean, Jaime and I always send a positive message because we have the rare privilege 
of uh, of being the good guys, of working for the good guys. And um, I say it's a rare privilege, but in reality, it's a path that we have carved for ourselves. And Jaime is right. I mean, we. I mean, he has lived more. Um, we always have the time to choose what is right and on the other hand if you have to get a job in which you are not the good guy but you need to get a job in which you're, you're not the good guy that is also okay if you sometimes need to just remember that you always have time to do what is right and to use um the superpowers that come from uh you know whichever degree you're studying be it law or environmental science or literally any other uh to help other people and to make this place uh, this world we live in a better place um here we have the example um the direct the director of Greenpeace Spain right now um her name is Eva Saldaña and she's like right now she's a very very influential woman in the environmental world world in Spain uh but she started being a Greenpeace activist uh like one of those who you know climb buildings and and I don't know, do things with paint and like chain themselves to trees and stuff. And she eventually, she worked so hard on that, that she was recognized for her talent for mobilizing an organization. And she eventually, well, she is now directing the whole branch of Greenpeace Spain um, and recognized for her labor. Um, what we're trying to say is that um, there's this very strong message um, probably within university, but generally within society that when you finish a degree, you have to, you know, go out there and make a lot of money and, and you know, be like competitive about life. Uh, but sometimes you can choose not only to prioritize your, your quality of life, but also your principles and to working something that makes you feel ethically okay with what you're doing. Um, and you don't have to feel that pressure to be competitive and to earn a lot of money. So I think that's what we're saying. Yeah. Thank you. Just to continue with our um, discourse, El, when I take the decision to start on environmental law, uh, law uh, in the practice, uh, I find, it, it, uh, as I told you, it was uh, 22 years ago. And things have changed a lot of uh, since that, especially because uh, this was the the earlier times on the, the 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 legal defense of the environmental in front of the courts. Uh, in the in the early uh, two thousand, there was a lot of environmental uh, international law, uh, especially regarding environmental uh, climate change, uh, biodiversity pro, uh, protection. But in the real time, the, in the real life, there was not too many experience of people defending in front of the courts, the, the environmental. So uh, when I first start, I, have to face, I had to face two, two big problems. First of all, my lack of expertise, but because of course I I, I was a starting uh, lawyer, but uh, uh, another big problem that uh, the the courts the judges were not used to uh, hear uh, about uh, environmental problems in the in in the court. They they they, and they are used to 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 solve problems regarding robberies, murdering, um, whatever you you could uh, think. But when you get into the court and say, "Okay, we have a problem because in this region of Spain uh, there is a permission to to hunt birds during uh, his breeding uh, time," and the reaction uh, of the judge were. Are you serious about talking about that? And I have to prove that. Well, first of all, I I was serious about that, and especially that the European environmental law and the Spanish environmental law uh, was on my side. That was absolutely forbidden for the birds directive and so on. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 very first environmental lawyer. Uh, 
search with the, uh, the, the very tight uh, pressure to, to make, to, to open the, the doors no? the, to this uh, kind of problem in the, in the, um, in the course. Now it's easier because there are too many sentences, too many uh, uh, um, judgments regarding environmental law, and it's not so a uh, new uh, matter, but it's still hard to prove uh, environmental damages and things like that, no legal standing and so on. But uh, it's a very nice uh, you know, timeline. To, uh, to get to see uh, how far are we getting are, are, are we uh, uh, now are, are we are now uh, using the law to, to protect the, the environment and it's quite satisfying for for uh, for us and I don't have as much experience as Jaime does um, but right, I come from a diff very different world in which uh, environmental law, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's mainstream, but it's not, people don't look at you um, like you're weird from doing that. I mean, a bit, but just because you you, you say that you don't wanna you know, make a lot of money or something. And that does get a strange looks, but not as it did in you know, the early 2000s. Um, because right now there are so much more, you know, um, postgraduate experience and a more, you know, ways to um, learn about environmental law. And it's way much more common because of the work that has been done by previous lawyers and by the work uh, here in Spain, Ecologistas en Acción has done a huge work to make, um, um, you know, judges think that we're not insane, which is something great to let the judges know. Um, and for example, one of the main things Ecologistas en Acción has done in the legal world, and I'm gonna just jump into the next point, Jaime, um, is something that we uh, call el juicio por el clima, which is an example, or the main example of Spanish strategic lit climate litigation. Um, I think I'm gonna let Jaime tell you about the legal part of the case. If he wants, you go on with this and then i'll tell you about the the communications part and what does it mean um to talk about strategic litigation well uh, as you can imagine uh, when you decide to get an environmental lawyer when uh, greenpeace espana and ecologistas en acción proposed you to uh, to direct uh, to be the, the director lawyer of the the first uh, uh, spanish um uh, climatic litigation is a, 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 is one thing you are very proud of, of it, no? and I'm very happy and very proud to 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 have been chosen as the, the the lawyer who will get the Spanish lack of activity uh, regarding the, the environmental uh, the climatic change uh, politics. So uh, the 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 grow the growing of the environmental law uh, in front of the courts arrive, but not finish, when uh, you are able to face the uh, um, governmental politics regarding um, climatic change in front of the courts. It's a very high uh, point of review of all the political measures uh, Facing well, the development uh, the, the uh, Paris Agreement, but um, you are asking the, the judgment to review, to analyze if the Spanish politics are enough to face the environmental climate um, problem we are facing as, as humanity. I mean, it's a very nice point of view. It's a very nice um, job uh, to, to, to face. So uh, we are trying to argue in front of the court that uh, as all the nations who, say, who signed the, the Paris Agreement compromised to adopt the, uh, the measures 
uh, to to raise a a, a limit that the increasing of the temperature of the global temperature and it's not gonna uh, be never over one and a half degrees uh, taking the one sign the, the the first point to to to, to take the taking point uh, from uh, the pre-industrial times and we are adopting such kind of agreement and this kind of special specific litigation in a time where we are suffering a very huge uh, climate uh, situation. Greece, as the same as Spain, are countries where uh, the science tells us that uh, the temperature is in the medium, is at the media, over 1.3 degrees over the pre industrial time. So we are talking about a real emergency. And when you get an emergency, you have to take an emergency measure. Unfortunately, all the human time have to face a recently a emergency measure when we face the COVID a, a global pandemic. Um, and all the countries adopt urgent measures to face a global problem. But if you compare with the climatic situation, you, you can easily check that the, uh, we are not taking this kind of, uh, of, of measures, uh, urgent and radical measures. Your country, uh, dear friends, um, Greece is uh, suffers every summer huge firework that uh, create an enormous danger from uh, population, biodiversity, etc., etc. As the same as Spain or Portugal, we all the countries of the Mediterranean area uh, have a similar uh, climate condition and suffer huge um, risks. We have lack of water uh, during um, a huge part of the, the year, as, as we in Spain uh, have uh, too. So it's time to adopt a stronger measure. And our government are not doing that. So that's the point we are uh, now facing this situation uh, in front of the court. Of course, I have so we, we recognize that our um, Musa, our inspiration point was of course the agenda uh, case that uh, was led in the Netherlands against his government, and they proved that the lack of a uh, method regarding the climatic uh, change mitigation are a problem to uh, the guarantee the, the, the due guarantee of um, a, a human rights and that's the point if we, uh, we cannot adopt now the uh, the due uh, measures against the climatic uh, uh, change we will get a uh, no regret regression point very dangerous and will uh, compromise our uh, not only our quality of life but uh, our way of our possibility to uh, to have a, a decent life and a, a life with uh, we can uh, um, this we can uh, enjoy 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 sorry I, I was uh, blank uh, to enjoy uh, our uh, human rights. And that, uh, and you say uh, it's uh, one, but when we face an strategic litigation of our, and the climatic litigation is an strategic litigation, we have to think it a coin that it's not only a legal uh, measure. It has to uh, be combined with communicative measures and uh, public participation measures. And that uh, point is gonna be uh, explained by uh, Irene. I'm going to be very brief because I know we don't have a lot of time and we have questions, but basically uh, strategic litigation is something very interesting. We're just starting to work in. Um, as Jaime has already explained, we have uh, the arguments on our side, but sometimes 
having the arguments on your side isn't enough. And that's when strategic litigation comes in. Um, when we talk about um, to, to litigate strate strategically, uh, we talk about the fact that it's not only important to take the case to court and to win the actual case in court, but we're talking about um, getting some social change uh, within, um, apart from the case, like using the case to make a lot of noise and to be on the news and to get people to know about what you're litigating. In this case, we have in front of the Supreme Court, uh, apart from the actual case and the lawsuit, which is almost 300 pages long, um, <laughs> We are also having this insane uh, communication strategy in which we're trying to publish a lot of um, uh, opinion editorials on, on a lot of newspapers and to get people interested in what we're doing. Uh, we organized uh, a protest uh, last in September 2021. Um, we're trying to get you know people signing a petition. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're taking the case and making it the spearhead of uh, the climate movement in Spain. We're trying to symbolize with this very easier to understand topic, um, the whole climate fight, which is something very big and very abstract for, you know, um, um, people who are not very involved in these matters to, to follow. Uh, that's in general when we, what we talk about when uh, we talk about strategic litigation. And there are many, many uh, famous examples before it was called like this in history. For example, I'm going to let you know, and this is very fast, um, Rosa Parks, the, the very famous um, anti-racist uh, case in, in the US that eventually uh, ended with segregation. Uh, it was a strategic litigation. Rosa Parks was intentionally um, uh, found to not, and she was instructed to not get up in the bus so as uh, she could get arrested and they could you know, get that case going and have that political pressure going on. Um, so as to get to the Supreme Court, this case uh, from, um, not sure what the case was, um, Rosa, it was Parks versus Montgomery, like the county of Montgomery. I'm not sure about the case reference, but it was, a, what I'm telling you is that it was something I was looked for. It was not accidental. It was something very planned and it was, it, it, it was means to an end. Um, and that is something I'm very passionate about, and as you can possibly guess. And I think you can, I mean, I could talk about this for hours, but this is probably where the future of environmental law resides right now, in, uh, or at least uh, when we're talking about climate litigation, because, you know, climate is a very small part of what all environmental law means. I am very, very specialized in climate and human rights, and Jaime knows more about the more ample environmental law, because, I mean, simply he has had more time to defend uh, the more, the things that could seem, that could be more easily identified as, uh, you know, environmental law, you know, birds, trees, um, buildings, city, uh, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, climate and human rights have now a lot in common and strategic litigation one of, is one of the main tools and probably um, one of the main, um, I mean, I, I am seeing a lot of job positions for lawyers right now relating to this in, in European, you know, NGOs and, 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 and the sort. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to say a strategic climate litigation, it's, um, it's a trend but it kind of is because like when the Urgenda case fail, uh, you know, when the Urgenda case in Holland, this very famous one um, got their judgment in 2018, like 90% of European environmental lawyers looked at that and said like, oh, I want to do that. And then that's why all of us are doing a strategic climate litigation right now. So thank you so much. And I think there are questions maybe. Yes, does anyone has any questions? You know that you can, you can ask whatever you want and feel free to ask whatever you want. If not, I have a question. And um, give me a second, please. Okay. Um, Jaime was talking about Paris Agreement and I have a question because I have read sometimes that the measures uh, set up in the Paris Agreement aren't enough 
And what is your opinion? You're mute, you're mute, Irene, or Jaime, or do you want to respond? Uh, not sure. Jaime, dale, si quieres. Okay. <laughs> a, a classic position in the environmental lawyer is that to criticize uh, incoming law because it's not enough, it's insufficient, and so on. But at last, we are the first ones to use this insufficient law to protect the environment. So, of course, a Paris Agreement was not, is not the international agreement we, uh, we need to face the environmental and, uh, and especially climatic emergency. But it's the one we have. And it's the one we have to use to make it that went to the enforcement of the uh, the fight and the battle against uh, a dramatic climatic change effects. So of course uh, it's not uh, enough because uh, they they choose uh, the no, the 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 parties choose a new position in which the the secretary of the convention de, does not choose an specific objective of mitigation for each party, but let the parties to uh, to be free to uh, to 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 choose to to establish side. Mm -hmm. the mitigation objective they they are gonna uh, use him as a political uh, goal. This uh, in cooperation with the Proto uh, Kyoto Protocol, uh, I think it was a, a lost in the battle against uh, climatic change. But insist is the environmental international law we have, and we are we 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 have to work with that, mm -hmm. and. What are uh, the environmental lawyers uh, doing with this uh, uh, Paris Agreement? They are, so we are uh, putting together the uh, Paris Agreement with the uh, International or the European Convention on uh, Human Rights, saying that uh, as the Paris Agreement order every country, every party, to make the necessary efforts to guarantee this uh, security objective, the 1.5 uh, degrees over pre-industrial levels, they are setting an specific obligation to do, to, to do every everything you can do. So when there, there is a lack of a, of a, of ambition uh, in your country. The, uh, your country is compromising your uh, human rights. And it, 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 it's, it, from the procedural point of view, it's very hard, very tricky. And that, 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 those were the, the main problems of procedural problems uh, we faced in the Spanish cases, the, the, the Juicio por el Clima. But, uh, are the argument we are using. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's not the best international law, but it's the one we have, and it's the one we are uh, using. And I think we successful. If you think the, the political influence of the Urgenda case or in Irla the, the, the Irlanda strategic litigation, even in, in Germany, France, etc., we are all using the agreement, the Paris Agreement. So at last, we are making a very good use of this insufficient international law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can mention some successful case uh, just to give us hope, you know, and mm -hmm. so. Okay, like more hope because uh, as you first said, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Alkino's uh, point. <laughs> So we are trying to be very positive to to encourage you to to mm -hmm. work on so to 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 stay in the light side and not in the dark side. So uh, I think uh, some examples of, of positive uh, legal action uh, in my career, for example, uh, I I win several times a judgment that uh, enforce the point. Uh, I, I I think I, I first tell you. 
that uh, it's not possible to allow to permit the uh, bird hunting during the, the breeding uh, season. I, I try, I, I'm trying to, to remember how many times I uh, avoid the construction. I think it was uh, two, at least two or, or even three times, the construction of a uh, coal or gas uh, power plants in Spain or uh, several cases of recovery of, uh, of urban spaces to uh, create uh, parks. But it's fundamental to uh, a as a politic of uh, adaptation to climatic change and to get a, a healthy environmental spaces to, mm -hmm. to enjoy. Or for instance, uh, several cases in which uh, we avoid the destruction of uh, patrimonial and historical uh, buildings with a huge uh, historical value for, for the, the series. Just to, to make some, some examples, of criminal cases against uh, hunters and things like that, um, we can talk uh, for, for longer, no? but yeah. that this could be a main example of that. And does anyone has any question? I do have a question. Okay, Katerina. Thank you so much for the very interesting um, presentation, conversation that you're starting. Um, I would like to ask for some examples of, or some kind of uh, practical ways that we as citizens can persuade our politicians to adopt this more radical le legislation that you've already mentioned. And I also have a follow-up question, um, which can be summarized into, um, is just ratifying a treaty um, and uh, having this legal approach um, enough? Because you've already mentioned the problem of wildfires here in Greece. What I'm thinking is that this problem indicates a much bigger problem of our institutions that are not working properly, of the Greek state and its mechanisms that are not working properly, and of a culture towards um, understanding the climate crisis that does not exist here. So what do you think that can be done there? Is it truly a very big problem? Um, I'm gonna take the floor on this one. Um, I mean, there, a lot of things. Um, well, first of all, I, I'm glad you enjoyed the, the, the talk. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of things any individual citizen can do. Um, and we always have this uh, answer paper, which is, you know, small actions, big actions. Like there's the small actions you can do that are ethically right within yourself. Like you can bike to work or and you can, you know, be vegetarian and you can, I don't know, not waste a lot of water when you shower and stuff like that. Um, but these small actions are usually best um, uh, accompanied by big actions like, you know, joining a certain activist group uh, within your means and capabilities, because this is the next part of the question. Um, we are lawyers and obviously we're talking about how what the law can do and what the law can do to help and, and you know, how to use it. But literally at this point, everything helps. So everything goes. And um, that's how you get, you know, many different activist groups and many different strategies to help climate change. Like you can see all the noise, like people like Extinction Rebellion are making in the UK and Fridays for Future is also very relevant, but there's also like more institutional places like the European Climate Foundation or the Environmental Bureau or you know, the European Environmental Bureau. Um, I think there's such a wide range of what you can do, um, of what you can do to press um, your politicians to help uh, the environment. Um, I wouldn't know where to start. I would say one of the main things you can do as an individual act and as an individual citizen is at least uh, to start small and to start being politically involved in your neighborhood and in your city and start to know 
uh, what the environmental problems in your city are. And when you're worried, go to your town hall and, and protest or send a letter to uh, your major or your district, uh, you know, representative. Um, use these things and, and, you know, to every time there's a law published, you, you can, um, I don't know if there's this resource in, 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 in Greece, uh, here in Spain, uh, when laws are published, uh, you are allowed to, you know, criticize them before they are actually published. So that's a very interesting resource that most people don't take advantage of. But I would say that being involved is the main, main first step that you, that anyone should take to be, uh, to help the, the uh, help solve the climate crisis. I don't know if it solved your question. It did solve my question. I actually uh, think about it a lot. Um, if I can truly make a difference by um, participating and um, volunteering events about the environment, I sometimes feel like I'm not making a true change and that a true change in Greek politics about the environment is going to come from the European Union and I'm not being heard, but you've given me some hope. So <laughs> thank you for that. Change comes from everywhere. That's the whole thing, I guess. Jaime? Yes. Catherine, I'm very glad to, to hear you and, and, and to feel that you are compromised too with this uh, global problem. And uh, as Rivera uh, as Rivera starts to say, I remember uh, everything helps, but uh, don't never get anxious because remember, please, Roma wasn't built in a day. So change, take his time. It's it's real. It's it's true. We have not too many times to to waste uh, arguing or discussing, but you, you cannot uh, calm down because it's a, you, you can it's a, you, you don't feel a real change coming. El, what we can do? Look, uh, the one of the international slogans of Greenpeace, and I, that, that I really uh, love, is uh, this one that, that said that uh, think global, act local. So you cannot pretend your singular, your individual action provoke international or global changes. You can uh, change. You can affect what you have uh, close to you. So think about uh, that. For instance, you vote every four or five years. In Spain, we have the sensation that we vote every two weeks, but uh, the, the elections the, uh, for your representatives are every five or, or four years. But you do shopping every day or every week at least. You move yourself, you use the transport every day. And you can choose if to, to use the private uh, car, uh, a motorcycle, a bicycle, go by feet, public transport, and things like that. That's the point of a, a start the chain for yourself that to try to provoke a global a global change. And this uh, this slogan can can be, can can sound uh, just as, as a slogan with no force, but uh, at least it's a, it's a, re it's a real uh, idea, it's a real um, law. Drop by drop, step by step, to, to, to uh, create a, a new world behind you, beside you, near to you. And that's a way to, to transform the, the environmental, the, um, our way of life. Of course, thank you very much. <laughs> you really, really made me calm down a bit. Um, I'm uh, thinking about whether participating um, in NGOs or community groups um, can actually pressure politicians. That's what I'm thinking about. Is, is protest the only way to truly pressure them? Is pro protesting? There's a saying I really like a lot, uh, which is um, never forget that a small group of committed people can change the world. 
which is not always exactly true. It has it, its limits, uh, unless you're, you know, Greta Thunberg or something like that. Um, but um, yes, community groups do help. And it's not all, it's not about what you do strictly, but what you start. Uh, because if you start having a community group, uh, you will get more people involved. And when you get more people involved, that's already more people who come the elections or whatever other big event, you will have more people to get uh, political pressure or incidents or um, whatever. Um, so yeah, my point would be protesting helps, but everything helps. And I, I mean, I don't know if you study law or what are you uh, studying or doing exactly, but I'm sure from your um, point of expertise, there's um, a lot of things you can do to fight climate change. At this point, there are sustainable focus, sustainability focused jobs in literally any branch of, of work. <laughs> I'm actually studying um, international and European relations, mm -hmm. and um, I've heard a lot about uh, the international approach to this issue. That's why I have so many questions about what can be done from bottom towards up, bottom up, and not top down. <laughs> After all, I'm just a student, <laughs> so that's why I have uh, all these kind of questions. But thank you very much. It's also about uh, the, the, the culture that needs. That's why starting from the community, from the local, uh, because you said in your first question, Katerina, you said about the lack of political culture about the environment. That, that's how you, you build. And that's why it takes time, as Jaime said before, because to establish a new uh, eco-friendly culture, etc., in a in a city, it needs time. It needs maybe a decade, maybe two, maybe three. But this is a way forward. Any other questions? Anyone? Carmen, is there anything else you would like to ask? I don't have any question. I don't know if anyone does have more question, but if not, actually, I, I have one last question. I I would uh, like to ask. Uh, it goes mainly to Iran because it's the younger generation of environmental lawyers. Okay, uh, through the social media, etc. There is there is a. Uh, a tendency to more action uh, about uh, env the environment, especially from young people. And I want to ask, does, it, does these tendencies that uh, we see online, do you see them translate as volunteerism, et cetera? Are the number of young people who, who fight more practically, who join uh, NGOs, et cetera, are they rising? I think one of the main things one should take into account in my generation is that whether you are a very compromised environmental activist or you're um, you know, not active political at all, or you are you know, a right wing, alt-right fan, whatever, no one my age is indifferent to climate change. You always have an opinion. You are, there, it's not something you can, live beside you like you can ignore it anymore which i think it's a huge difference between my generation and the previous ones um then again we are the, like probably the first or or of the first generations that already grew up with you know climate change and you know the end of uh oil and stuff in our tech in our social science textbooks um i would say that Sometimes it um, the communication bubble generated by um, social media is a very real problem in which you are in environmental uh, 
protesting groups or whatever, and then the only thing you see are other environmental content from other people. And maybe you're seeing a lot of that because you're in this sort of um, communication bubble. Um, but I would say in general that the fact that there's so much content online about envir you know, environmental problems, the Earth, the planet, blah, 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 um, is a great sign of a concerned generation. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I solved your question. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, last call for a question, anybody? Um, I have a question, actually. Yeah, yes, you have Um, I see many people at my age not being interested in like um, helping the environment uh, and being um, active in the uh, environmental activities and stuff. I think it comes from um, the school and the parents not making it fun for the kids to adapt it in the afterlife. Uh, I mean, the afterlife. Uh, you know, the adult life. Yeah. Uh, George is uh, 19 years old because he said about his age, but you don't know him. <laughs> I mean, I'm 24, yeah. so... Yeah. I'm not really that far. Um, I am, but not that much. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Here we have Parents for Climate, which is a very fun initiative, uh, which does get a lot of kids involved in, um, you know, after school protesting, which is something very cute to see, like the, the tiny little children with signs and stuff. But I mean, from here, Jaime is the one who's a parent, so he can tell you more about um, kids being involved in climate protesting or not. As you can imagine, my little children are very interesting and very conscious about the environmental things and the protection of the nature. But it's true that it's necessary to, to, get, to get involved in the, the child, the childhood in the, in the environmental matter, to make them affordable, to understand and uh, I think there are enough materials to, to help the professor, the teachers, to, to, to get in contact with this, uh, this situation and to translate, to, to take it to the, to the child. But I, I don't think, I, I understand you, Giorgio, because you, you, you have the same feeling I had when, when I was your age. That uh, to feel a little alone and to, 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 to feel that anyone is, is so conscious or enough conscious of uh, the environmental problems. But the, at last it's an unreal feeling. Why, 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 do, uh, why uh, do I, I say that? Because, for instance, in Ecologistas en Acción, our environmental group, in the juridical working group, we have the same lament every year. There are no new people, young people, that is never interested on that. And it's not true because we have always new people working in this, in this matter. In the environmental groups in general, you can uh, find uh, older people, younger people, and, things, uh, and so on. So at last, and, and I think it's, it's, it's a very relaxing uh, thinking. We have a lot of different generation working or conscious about the environmental problem. So uh, as I said first uh, to Catherine, don't get anxious about, about that. Your generation is much better than mine uh, facing environmental uh, problems or environmental um, uh, uh, what uh, questions uh, to, to face uh, that uh, mine and we are all, all the generation working on this. Um, sorry, it. one second, Jaime. I am so sorry. I have to go. I have a meeting right now. Uh, it has been a pleasure and I thank you so much for the time to speak with you. Thank you very much. And I hope thank that you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Bye bye and have a good life. Bye.
<laughs> Thank you. Okay, Jaime, you can continue. <laughs> no, I, 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 I already finished. So, it, as uh, Rubiera has just said, uh, it's been a pleasure for me to, to be with you and to, to chat with you. Uh, any other question? I do not have a question, but I do have a comment because we've already mentioned uh, the topic of social media. They do have quite a lot of power and George, who was worried like me, can use it to find um, an NGO that interests him or some kind of independently organized uh, environmental action that he can take a part in. That's how he can find a community of like-minded people. It, it's hard to find people who think like you, um, who are in the same school or in the same university. Uh, but through social media, I think that uh, th this has become a lot easier. So hmm. you can try it out. It, it's absolutely real that social media makes it easier to get connected between us and you can connect with people who is far away from you or even from other countries, other cultures, and things like that. And it's our obligation, it's a must, to use these new powers of, of connection. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's how um, social movements have truly um, how can I say it? Uh, transcended, uh, transcended um, from their original country and got it to other countries and have got more people involved. We can see it from the last feminist movement or Black Lives Matter. Social media was at the forefront, and this can happen to um, with um, the environmental movement. So I am quite hopeful about that. I'm happy about that. About that. <laughs> Alkinos, I think that if I have Alkinos have have some problems with the internet. So um does anyone have any question? Do you know is the time to hmm. ask? It's, okay, it's late so, and it's hot, so. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Ah, and Guinness, you are here again. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, my dog. No, it's okay. Uh, sorry. I guess that we can conclude. And um, yeah. Yes. Uh, and. Jar yeah, Alkinos, I think that you have some problems with the Wi-Fi or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, guys, if anyone has has any question, I think that we can conclude this dialogue, and we will see you at September. I will send you the the email through the the Erasmus Gmail, and we will see you on September. So have a nice summer and enjoy a lot the beach the vacation and these kind of things and ha Jaime thank you very much for being here it was very very interesting um and yeah have fun yeah. this summer and enjoy it a lot and yeah. thank you very much have fun in the summer too and uh really really thank you to, <clears throat> to invite me to say this time with you it's a pleasure, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>